stuff. All right, let's talk about uh, the race for governor, the race for U.S. Senate, and uh, one of the most watched uh, Congress uh, races for Congress around here, which was, of course, the Bob Filner, Nick Papaditch. And joining me now this morning, political analyst and consultant, John Dadian. John, good morning. Good morning. You have that glow. You have that after election day glow. You love this stuff. Well, it's like a junkie coming off a high, of course. This is what we live for. <laughs> it is indeed. All right, we're looking at the numbers right here, and I think this is surprising a lot of people this morning, and maybe not surprising a lot of people this morning. Jerry Brown pulled this thing off yesterday, 54% to Meg Whitman's 41%, despite all the money that was spent by Meg Whitman and the message that she got out there. All this rule in the book, if both campaigns, Brown would have run a great campaign, Whitman would have run a great campaign, it would have been close. What happened was Brown won a great campaign, the Whitman people ran a very bad campaign. When that happens, the outcome is pretty much determined. Now, why do you think that? I mean, she spent a, a, an outrageous amount of money. I mean, more money than has ever been spent in a, a U.S. political race like this, aside from the president. Um, and the ads really went through the spectrum from negative to positive to in between. She had everything. Again, traditionally, overwhelmingly, the majority of first-time self-funded candidates usually lose. The list is longer than my arm. It really goes down. It's just psychologically, you have that much money, you're really not spending judicially, as the Jerry Brown campaign did. Yeah. Speaking of spending a lot of money, we move on to uh, Carly Fiorina, who, uh, of course, you know, she spent a lot of her own personal fortune on this as well. And we were just talking about Barbara Boxer going back for a third term. You call her the Teflon candidate, almost like Ronald Reagan, they used to call him. A lot of people, especially in the Republican Party, say that Barbara Box has a lot of baggage. I think that's completely accurate. If you look at all the gas she's had, and again, when you're in the public office that much, you develop a lot of baggage, et cetera. She keeps winning. She just keeps on winning. You can call her the Teflon candidate. You can call her the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, well, she keeps on going. She does. That, that is for sure, 50% to 45%. And then Carly Fiorina, of course, you know, she gave it the good fight. Um, what happened to her campaign? Again, one uh, trait that she has similar to Meg Whitman is she's a first-time candidate. Yeah. And if you look, when they, both of them, when they did volunteer work for John McCain and some others, they had gaffes, uh, you know, when they were just a supporter. So Barbara Boxer came up, you know, uh, the traditional way, county supervisor, congresswoman, senator. So this, this is an all pro. Again, very, trait very similar to Jerry Brown. There's a reason why these people have these, this history is because they know what they're doing. Yeah, you know, but uh, as, we, as we heard through the campaign, uh, this was the time to throw the bums out, right? I mean, yeah, she worked her way up through this. She said this is the 11th time she's been elected to a, a public office. But I thought that the sentiment in America today was throw the bums out. Let's start with some new faces, some people who aren't career politicians. You certainly, but apparently that's not the message. You certainly saw that across the country in many, many pockets, et cetera. Yeah. But again, rhetorically, I'll say that begs a question to the two Republican candidates mm -hmm. for California's top two races. If the sentiment was there, is it just the wave stopped when it got to the West Coast? Or why couldn't they ride that wave? That's the question that people are going to be uh, picking apart these campaigns afterwards. Yeah, that's for sure. Got two years to pick that one apart. All right, now this is a race a lot of people were watching. Nick Papaditch, of course, a, uh, a war veteran, and Bob Filner. Um, Nick Papaditch thought, you know, we, we talked to him a lot, and we talked to both of them a lot. Through, They thought it was going to be tighter than this. 60% Filner gets down there to uh, Papaditch's 40 Absolutely. Keep in mind one aspect of that race, with all due respect to Nick Popovich ran a great campaign and he ran a very aggressive campaign. However, the current districts, the gerrymandering, the registration is so overwhelming, it really was very tough. Here is a few things to watch for the future. What's going to happen the next time this particular congressional seat is up? The lines will be different. It will be redistricted ne next time. That's a huge difference. Prop 20, it looked like, passed, and Prop 27 failed. So Congress now is going to be in the redistricting commission. That's a huge change, first time in the state. So I think Nick Popovich is looking toward the future. He's already got his eyes on two years from now. And Bob Filner looking at? Well, Bob Filner's been in 17 years. Every Congress member of Congress I've ever talked to says the same thing. It's no fun being in the minority party. You lose a lot of power. So he's been in 17 years. He's going to be the minority power right now. Big rumor that he's running for mayor of San Diego in two years. I think that's a very real rumor. Well, that hat's getting busy. That's good. Everybody's running for mayor of San Diego in 2012 except Dan Plan and John Dadian. Yeah, us, we're, we haven't announced yet. Well, no, we're both smart enough. I, maybe, <laughs> I, maybe I should just speak for myself. Yeah, I was like, I don't want that job. I really, really don't. And then, of course, we'll just mention your candidate. You had a candidate in this race. Uh, San Diego County is going to have a new county assessor for the uh, first time in many years. There was an uh, uh, appointed incumbent, so we had to put that on ballot as appointed. So uh, Ernie Dronenberg is going to be the new county assessor, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to him doing good things at county government. All right, John Dadian, political analyst. Thanks.
Thank you, Dan. See you later. Come down off that high. I know you love it.